Attention Northwest Arkansas businesses and talent seekers. Introducing Onboard NWA.com, your hyperlocal job board crafted for our unique community. Struggling to find the perfect match for your job openings? Onboard NWA simplifies the hiring process, connecting you with the region's top talent through tailored talent matching solutions. Whether you're an employer seeking expertise or a professional looking for your next opportunity, Onboard NWA is here for you. Discover more at onboardnwa.com and let's build the future of Northwest Arkansas together. It's time for another episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas, the podcast covering the intersection of business, culture, entrepreneurship, and life in general here in the Ozarks. Whether you are considering a move to this area or trying to learn more about the place you call home, we've got something special for you. Without further ado, here's our fearless host, Randy Wilburn. Hey folks, and welcome back to a special episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas. I'm your host, Randy Wilburn. And um, you know it's special when I bring somebody back for a, a second discussion, but unfortunately I wish it were under better conditions uh, as we are all currently dealing with uh, the specter of the coronavirus looming over not just the United States, but it's blanketed the world. And, and so many people are you know, up in arms and, and really honestly fearful about what's going on and what's happening. And, and I have actually reached out to a lot of different professionals in Northwest Arkansas that provide all kinds of services to see how can we as consumers, as biz, small business owners, as medium-sized business owners, as large business owners, how can we protect ourselves uh, in light of everything else that's going on? And so I actually asked the folks from Idafio Technology Partners. I don't know if you remember Kenny Kinley, who is the CEO and president of Idafio. Kenny came on uh, the episode a, a little while back here on I Am Northwest Arkansas and really shared the vision of the company. And you know, they they are a they're not just a technology service provider. They they do quite a bit in, in the area of, of of IT specifically, but then they cover everything with regard to um, cybersecurity. Uh, they deal with uh, the cloud as a whole and just having a, a better understanding of how businesses and individuals can use the cloud. But I um, I spoke to these guys the other day and I said, you know, we should probably do an episode where we talk about just where things are right now, the state of affairs. And, you know, they came up with some really good ideas in terms of ways that businesses can can help protect themselves and their customers and their employees for that matter. And also, you know, how, how are we going to deal with things from a social distancing perspective? Everybody's got to be six feet away from each other. So it's kind of hard to go into certain office environments and work, uh, you know, shoulder to shoulder with your colleagues. And so these folks at Adafio have, uh, have been doing this for years and they have quite a bit of experience under their belt. And so I asked Will Smothers, I asked Angel Button, and I also asked Sam Grubbs, before you think it or ask, he's no relation to the Grubbs restaurant empire. I already asked him about that, but that's just a joke. Um, but seriously, I, uh, I asked these guys to come on and, and just share with us just a little bit about what they're experiencing on the front lines of information technology and, and, and network operations and cybersecurity and, and everything that's going on. And I, I just appreciate you guys coming on. I know it's a long-winded intro, but how are you guys doing? Great, thanks. Yeah, good. 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 Awesome. Awesome. Well, that's great. Okay. Well, we, we are going to kind of move it around and, and, and rotate around and just kind of share with the audience. But we, we had, you know, lately, I, I know that uh, I was sh share some information that your team shared with me. Melissa Swan, who's your director of marketing, uh, shared some information about um, how, you know, this whole COVID-19 outbreak has really created a large demand for internet service, um, AT&T, Comcast, so many others, they're actually removing data caps 
temporarily at least, um, and they're increasing speeds, and some are even offering free service. So I'd love for you, first of all, just to speak about that, because that speaks specifically to access and uh, what what people need, especially businesses. I don't know, Will, if you want to start with that. Sure, I'd be happy to. So, um, you know, obviously during uh, the COVID-19 and the the social distancing and uh, all the new um, regulations that have been put into place, as well as a a lot of the curfews and things of that nature, uh, it's not only put a strain on um, businesses, it's also putting strain on uh, families, uh, and specifically families in rural areas such as Arkansas that may or may not have access to uh, good internet or maybe don't have internet at all. Uh, so there's a number of uh, companies out there that are providing for the next 60 days or so free to low cost um, uh, internet service. Uh, they're offering free Wi-Fi services at their all their hotspots across the the, the nation. Uh, and a lot of those are offering them, especially if you have students, uh, whether they be in um, public schools, pri- uh, pri- private schools, or if they're in colleges. Consumer Reports has got a great uh, website that has a list of all of these service providers. Um, obviously, not every single one of them, but a large number of the major uh, national chain uh, folks who are offering this. Uh, so I, I would recommend just doing a quick Google search for Consumer Reports. Uh, IFP uh, Corona pandemic, uh, and it should come up right away. Uh, and scroll down about halfway through the, the page, and you'll start seeing the list of all the providers who are offering free and, and low cost services, and what those are, and what they're doing. Additionally, on top of service providers, uh, there are also things like utilities that are suspending things. Right? They're they're suspending late fees. They're not going to cancel service if you're unable to pay during this time period because so many people work for hourly wages, things of that nature. So it seems that a lot of the businesses throughout the country are really coming together to help um, alleviate some of the problems that the the common Americans are going to be dealing with throughout uh, the next couple of months. Yeah. And and so and I know I got a list of them and, and we'll put a list of all of this in the show notes because I think people will want to know where to go. And, and um, I think that information is valuable. So so what are you what are you guys hearing? I mean, you guys are on the front line. So you're hearing from firms that are saying, oh, my God, you know, we now have to send everybody home. Are, are you did you guys kind of create a punch list that firms need to have before they start sending their people home? Uh, so that they can remote work because not everybody does remote work, right? So for some, in some, right. in some verticals, that's like heresy. Nowadays, it's like okay, it's it's just the status <laughs> quo, right? Everybody wants to right. home. Everybody it, like before it was like, well, I don't think I want to homeschool my kids. Now everybody wants to homeschool their kids, and the same thing with working. I don't want to. I can't work from. Or it wasn't. I don't want to work from home. It was. I can't work from home. Now businesses are forcing you to work from home in a lot of instances. So what are you? What are your recommendations for companies that? Are now that are finally faced with this, and it's almost like they're being arm twisted by, you know, uh, rules and laws that the government is now placing on us and saying that, hey, you know, you're going to have to shelter in place. I, I have a, a family member that's out in the Bay Area. They can't go anywhere for like three or four weeks. I mean, outside of just just normal runs. So what what are you what are your thoughts about that, or what will your recommendations be? Yeah, I mean, I think that, that's a, a great thing to, to start talking about. Uh, obviously, um, working from home or working remotely has been around for 15 years. Uh, but even today, only about 30% uh, of all employees who can or have the capability of working from home actually do it. Now, that may be because of pressure from their company. It may be for other reasons, you know, lack as we talked about a minute ago, lack of uh, broadband internet, things of that nature. However, um, today we're really being forced to do that and people just don't know how to do it. So, you know, some of the, I have been very fortunate and several of the other folks on the call as well have been very fortunate to work for some very large companies who embraced uh, remote connectivity and remote working. And the folks that I have seen who have either worked with me or for me who have been really, really successful in this take working from home just like they do working in the office, right? So they get up in the morning, they take a shower, they get dressed, and they commute from their shower or their bedroom to their home office, wherever that may be. It's a dedicated space. Maybe it's a corner of your kitchen. 
Maybe it is an actual home office, but they commute there. They close the door or they put up a do not disturb sign and they work. And that's what they do all day is they work all day on um, whatever their project may be, whatever their tasks may be. That is their job. Uh, and they treat it just like they would there if they're in the office. The biggest drawback in the early days, and, and we kind of overcome a lot of these hurdles, was feeling isolated. You know, I'm here all day by myself, working by myself. I get home or the, um, the rest of my family gets home and they, they want to socially interact and I'm just right. I don't, I don't, I don't want to do it. So um, obviously there, we have lots of tools available to us today to do that. Uh, video conferencing, video calling. Uh, those are all massive uh, new tools that allow folks to be able to feel more connected, uh, reach out to someone and say, Hey, I'm having a problem. Can you take a look at this with me and collaborate on a document or whatever they may be able to uh, be working on. And, um, you know, we at Adafia, we we have a number of those tools in our in our uh, toolkit to help uh, companies with that. But we really we really like Teams. It's a it's a nice utility that has a lot of hooks and ties into the other um, standard office productivity uh, suites that everyone is used to: Word, PowerPoint, Excel, Outlook. Um, it ties in with all of those, makes it really easy to use. Uh, and you don't necessarily have to be an Office 365 subscriber to use them. Mm -hmm. um, there is a free version of Teams uh, that is very, very useful that Microsoft is, is basically giving everyone access to, especially during this time uh, away. It's, it's, um, if you use Microsoft Utilities, it's a very intuitive tool. So that's a great uh, kind of, I don't want to say a punch list, but kind of a, some, some guidelines to be successful, right? But uh, working from home, obviously you're going to have some uh, distractions, kids, dogs, uh, spouse, significant other, whatever the case may be. And, and so having that space to yourself that you can kind of close yourself in um, helps isolate you from some of that uh, distraction. Uh, many of the companies we work with and many companies that are out there today already have um, infrastructure uh, in place to allow their employees to work remotely. Uh, the problem is most of them um, have not done it at scale. So they maybe are set up to allow one or two of their employees to work remotely. Uh, but now we're talking about taking 90% of their workforce and sending them home, 90% um, plus. Uh, so they're just not, they're not set for that. They're not scaled for it. Um, obviously, obviously Adopio, that's kind of right in our wheelhouse. That's what we, we can help them do. We can help them uh, get ready for that. Or if they're already in the midst of it, we can help make them more efficient, make their things work a little bit better. And it's not necessarily just leveraging things, traditional things like uh, virtual private networks or VPNs, right? It, it's taking a look at how your business works and trying to get you the best solution as quickly as possible to keep you up and running and efficient. Uh, what I mean by that is you maybe have um, are using traditional file shares inside of your 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 business, right? Everybody connects to a server and pulls the file off and works on it. Well, you may not be able to do that very efficiently uh, when you're working remotely at scale. Uh, you may have to leverage a, a software as a service uh, technology like um, SharePoint or Microsoft OneDrive or Dropbox or uh, you know, any of the other number of file sharing solutions that are out there. So we don't try to take a one size fits all approach. We're going to help you understand what's, what can we do quickly and what is the right thing for you and your business to make sure um, we keep your people working, we keep you productive and we keep you being profitable. So I think the key that I, I heard in everything that you said, and, and you, you, you really laid it out nicely is that it, it you don't take a cookie cutter approach to, no. to addressing this problem. So one business owner down the street with 30 employees and another business owner uh, up the street, they're both friends. He might have 50 employees. They might have totally different needs when it comes to VPN, mm -hmm. when it comes to software as a service. And so you are able okay. to quickly kind of look at, at, look at that and make some recommendations about the easiest okay. way for them to, to get things set up. Sure. And, and, and that, I think that's, that encapsulates it very nicely, Randy. And, uh, you know, to your point, you may have two businesses side by side. They're the exact same size, but, you know, one's a doctor's office and the other one is a quickie mark. Uh, two totally different needs, right? One has to deal with HIPAA. The other one has to deal with 
the city with credit cards, PCI compliance, things like that. So you're, you're absolutely right. Yeah, and and I'm glad you brought up doctors' offices because I know that's actually one of the niches that you serve. That's a that's a big market. Mm-hmm. When you came up here from Central Arkansas to Rogers, you you had done a lot of work with accountants and other firms, and then you had done a lot of work mm-hmm. in the healthcare space. How is what's happening with COVID nineteen going to impact you guys in terms of you know the solutions that you're going to need to provide? for your clients, given everything that's going on. I, I'm just imagining that the system is just going to be overrun <laughs> with a, just a lot of new people, sure. right? I mean, you know, you, you've got to drive through yeah. clinics now and everything. So how are you guys able to address that? Yeah, and that, that's a great question. And, and, it, and it really brings up and brings into light the whole uh, issue of working remotely. I mean, in reality, because you do, you have the drive through clinics uh, that, that have to deal with PCI or uh, HIPAA, pardon me, uh, HIPAA compliance. And so you've got to be able to give them a secure solution for that to where the patient feels like their privacy matters, yeah. um, but you're giving them the, the, the folks who are working at the ability to um, get the information they need to help that patient adequately. And so, you know, we will definitely be uh, take a look at those type of situations and help them figure out, hey, do you need to be using um, a software as a service electronic, uh, electronic medical records or, or how can we get you access in that remote location to your emergency medical, I'm sorry, not your emergency, your electronic medical records uh, that sit on in your, your doctor's office as opposed to up in the cloud. Maybe the, maybe VPN is the right solution. Um, maybe accessing it through uh, some type of, of web interface is, is more efficient. So, um, but the big thing for us is making sure that those healthcare professionals have what they need to get their job done. Because right now, um, having served military for 11 years, they're kind of the front lines, right? They're kind of the infantry right now. Those are the guys who are dealing and girls who are dealing with the brunt of this problem. And those folks can't work from home. They don't have the luxury that the rest of us do. They are dealing with it every day. Uh, they're exposed to it every day and they can't uh, necessarily um, take time off to help that. So our goal is to make them efficient, uh, keep them productive and healthy uh, so that they can continue to help the rest of us out. And okay. if I can jump in here, this is yes, Sam. Uh, just want to add in there, you know, Will mentioned to the compliance piece of it, the HIPAA. And, um, you know, part of what we also want to make sure is that when they are implementing these solutions or um, they uh, move to, you know, there's a lot of uh, telehealth, if you will, um, where, uh, you know, I know that uh, university uh, of Arkansas medical system is offering screenings uh, via uh, okay, online sessions. Yeah. So, um, making sure that those are answer any of those compliance questions that they might have. Um, you know, we have, uh, security and healthcare consultants that, uh, can, can answer those questions really quickly so that if they have a question about, you know, what, how does, uh, OCR, the, um, which regulates all this stuff, how are they, uh, uh, dealing with this? How are they um, going to look at this? What what do they want you to do for these sorts of things? We can quickly answer those. Yeah, no, I, I, I listened to that this morning. I was um, listening to something and then I kind of pushed out that information because that they were a um, UAMS was putting putting that information out there. And then on top of that, Children's also put out a call in uh, tele health line um, if you mm-hmm. suspect that your child uh, may have uh, the coronavirus. And I think it's just important that people know that. I'll be sure to put that information in the show notes because I have a sneaking suspicion that that website and those phone numbers are going to be in use 24-7 for um, several days and weeks ahead. So uh, I'll definitely share that yeah, out. Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, and and just to give uh, just to give Will a little bit of a break because uh, he's he's been talking a lot. Um, then certainly, why don't we have Sam and and uh, and Angel jump in a little bit? And I know Sam, you and I talked, and, and Angel too. We talked a little bit about the the another issue that's come up with this um, with this whole pandemic is that people are going to be taken advantage of. And um, we talked about phishing and the importance of that. And I would love for you guys, because you deal with cyber attacks on a regular basis. And I think sometimes we, you know, if it doesn't happen to us, it's kind of out of sight, out of mind. But it, it cyber attacks is a real thing. And uh, businesses need to protect themselves uh, from cyber attacks. Um, they can be, there can be um, 
uh, financial loss because of a cyber attack, and there can also be lawsuits because of cyber attacks. So absolutely, there are a multitude of, of of issues there, and I would love for you just to kind of speak about that from both from the business perspective, and then we'll we'll end and we'll get to the like individuals and how they they may be able to protect themselves. Sure, absolutely. Um, so yeah, just just what you were saying, there's a lot of uh, exploitation that goes on with any sort of uh, major event like this, um, whether it be, you know, a cybersecurity attack or somebody selling toilet paper for $50 a pop on Facebook Marketplace. I mean, <laughs> a wide gambit there. Um, but I, I think the big thing is that from a business perspective, um, what what we see here is that the, there's a normal level of vulnerability that a any business has um, to social engineering attacks. And when we say social engineering, mainly we're talking about phishing, uh, which is when somebody sends you an email, they're trying to get you to click a link, enter information. They're pretending to be somebody you know, your CEO or uh, a coworker, somebody you do business with. And they're just trying to get information or access to your credentials, get you to download malware uh, so that they can further exploit you. And that's a normal everyday vulnerability. Um, you're going to be dealing with that all the time um, anyways. But when we have something like this epidemic, the issue is that there is so much uh, thought process, emotional energy that is uh, your, your employees will have around that event that a phishing email becomes even more dangerous. You know, with a good phishing email, I have to do some research. I have to figure out what your business is, who I'm sending it to, you know, the, the old adage, which whenever I bring up, I used to do um, cybersecurity teaching, and whenever I would bring up phishing, um, inevitably someone would be like, oh, yeah, the Nigerian print scam. We all know that. <laughs> um, you know, the old, I'm a Nigerian prince, I have a million dollars, just send me a bank account number, I'll give you the money. Yeah. And that's really not what phishing is anymore. Um, those sorts of things don't work because everyone knows about them. And so they have to do research, they have to really personalize it, and, and they'll take the time to do that. Attackers will uh, take the time to do that. But with something like this, they don't have to do that. Um, they can use the common knowledge, the, the stuff that's going on in the world that they know everyone knows about, and use that as their attack point. So um, we've been seeing all sorts of examples of uh, COVID-related emails that are going out, um, one of the big ones is CDC and World Health Organization uh, bulletins. Um, so you'll get an email and it looks like it's a bulletin from the CDC or World Health Organization that says, hey, we have some new updates about the, the coronavirus. Uh, click here to find out about them. Um, really easy, you know, people are, are interested in this. They want to know. They have some panic behind it, some anxiety behind it. And so they'll, they'll click without even thinking, why is the CDC directly emailing me? <laughs> that, that seems a little weird, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, we also see a lot of things that are exploiting people's um, financial situation. Um, insurance companies uh, or fake insurance coverage uh, emails saying, hey, um, you, you know, in order to be covered for any corona related uh, expenses, you need to click here and enter your information, right? And um, they'll grab information that way or, or get you to click a link to download malware. Um, looking at things like uh, college students receiving emails about closings or other things. Um, you know, there's uh, emails, um, talking about uh, uh, company policy. Um, and this could, this could really especially hit people who are, um, you know, uh, uh, I'm, I'm losing my words here, but wage earners, you know, working right. hourly salary. That's yeah. what I was thinking of. Yeah. Um, because, you know, they may receive an email to their personal account that says, hey, if you are a wage earner, click here. This is a government program to, you know, give you some relief. And, and they're already uh, desperate for cash as it is. Exactly, right? Yeah. Um, you know, these attackers, they don't care. They're d despicable in my mind. Yeah. Um, and we're not seeing this just in email. Um, we're seeing this across all sorts of different things. Um, Android apps. Um, and uh, I'm not sure if we've seen, we've seen Android apps. I'm not sure if we specifically seen iPhone apps, but it's a very real possibility of virus tracking. 
Um, so you want to see, you know, what, how the infection is affecting your city, um, maybe even down to the neighborhood, right? And I'm, I'm using that loosely because these don't do anything. Um, they're just exploiting your system. Um, we've also seen malware kits um, that are used to create web pages, and they look really good. I mean, they've got a nice map of the world. There's all these little red circles. It looks like something out of a movie, like Contagion or something like that. Yeah. Um, but they are using known exploits um, in things like Java to download malware onto your system when you go to that website. Um, and uh, organizations, cyber criminals have started selling these things, uh, these kits for 200 to $700. So not a, a high price point uh, to create your own sort of Corona malware kit uh, that you can then use to try to exploit people. Um, and the thing that we really worry about is again, hitting those people that are really desperate, um, especially things for, um, you know, diapers, formula, um, uh, baby food. I have a toddler right now who drinks a gallon of milk a day, it seems. <laughs> um, and so if I'm seeing something that comes in that says something about, uh, you know, milk coupons or milk shortage or something like that, I'm more likely to kick, click. Exactly. So, um, you know, that's, that's kind of getting from, from high level, you know, you're going to have things coming into your business about insurance, about time off, about policy, uh, and going down to the more personal things about uh, money for yourself and, and supplies and these sorts of things. Yeah. And so, you know, to add to this, what, what would you say to, I'm, I'm a small business owner. I've got a bunch of employees. What would you say to our team if we brought you in to, to, so, to say, how, what can we do to protect ourselves from it outside of just being very cautious to read and reread and triple read the information that's coming through? Because a lot of times it's just the little things like there's, there are misspellings and things that should be capitalized aren't. And, you know, most businesses that put any kind of information out to their customer or client base takes pains, great pains to, to put things out with a lot of, without a lot of clerical errors. And that's probably like the first sign, but what would you say? I, I mean, it, I, and your, to your point, yes, that's true. But even now, um, you know, clerical errors are, are they apparently these hackers have gone to school and, and done some, read some grammar <laughs> books because they're doing really well at spelling things correctly and that sort of stuff. So uh, the real things is um, protect yourself technically um, as well as, um, you know, just in the way that you do business. So uh, the big thing is making sure that you have strong passwords um, that you're putting in place. Um, never share your password. Never enter in a credential unless you absolutely trust where you're entering it into. And honestly, the biggest thing for us when it comes to this phishing stuff is enabling multi-factor authentication. Yeah. If you can, and it, you know, it is something that is an extra feature that may cost uh, additional money, um, but there's a lot of places to where you can get multi-factor, where you can um, you know, it, it's not necessarily a pain point uh, in terms of price, as you might think. And it really, really, really helps uh, when it comes to these phishing attacks, because it's so much more difficult for them to get access to that second factor of uh, authentication than it is to, for them to get a uh, password. Um, Can you just, just for the audience, just give them like, like in layman's terms, the best understanding of multi-factor so they get it. Cause I I totally understand what you're saying. Everything I do is multi-factor, but it's a pain, but I just want people to have a better understanding of it. Yeah, absolutely. So multi-factor is where you have a, um, usually you have your password, username, password. So um, let's take uh, Microsoft 365, for example, uh, since it's a product a lot of people are familiar with. Mm -hmm. You type in your username, you type in your password, you hit enter. At that point, it's going to ask you if you want to um, uh, use your multi-factor, if you want to get a verification code, usually by phone number or email. Mm -hmm. So that's your second factor. That's the multi-factor part. Um, So it will text a code to your phone or send an email with a code in there and you have to enter that code in order to get access, right? Um, So it's, again, very hard for the hacker to get access to both your phone and your password at the same time in order to get that um, code. Now, it's not impossible. I'm not going to say that this will solve all your problems, but um, your most basic level of attacks uh, that are going out there are going to be thoroughly mitigated by this. Uh, So, and then, you know, 
you want on for a, a small business like this, you want to make sure that you have your antivirus installed, right? Um, that you have that up to date, um, that you're, you have all your patches and stuff, especially if you're taking your device home um, for these long periods of times, so you want to make sure that you're still routinely checking and updating those definitions and those patches. And then um, from the IT sort of side, you know, this is more for a mid to large tier organization, but on the IT side, you want to uh, emphasize checking login activity a lot more than you might normally, especially these remote sessions. Yeah. And uh, geolocation is going to be uh, critical here as well. Um, nobody is going to be logging in from China. Um, <laughs> these days, uh, yeah. you know, or <laughs> yeah, any exactly. other country. Um, we're not moving, so um, we should all be logging in, logging in from a very distinct small location. Um, so if you're seeing logins that are coming from areas outside of where you know your employees are, uh, then that's obviously a big red flag that there's some sort of compromise. So uh, these sorts of things will really keep you safe. And then on the um, you know, sort of keeping your awareness side, anything that has COVID in it is immediately suspicious. Yeah. Um, anything at all, even if it comes from your CEO, um, even if it comes from your cube mate, who's your best friend that you've known for 10 years, it should all be suspicious. Uh, you just need to make sure when you're checking these emails, um, the first thing you can do is you can hover over the name and see where the email actually came from. Sometimes um, there is a name that pops up like Sam Grubb, and you're like, oh, that's Sam Grubb. But then the email address is, um, you know, IT at whatever, whatever weird hacker domain.com. Right. And uh, so checking those things, making sure that you, it's actually coming from an email that you recognized and, and that sort of stuff. Um, Angel, is there other things you want to add? Um, I probably would add in there for mid to large size companies that we should also look at strengthening and we'll could probably speak to that more for 0365, but you need like an email firewall that is doing your frontline analysis on the attachments, sandboxing it, evaluating it. Um, you're phishing. The links are part of the threat feed already that is showing that it's malicious. So that kind of, um, intelligence beforehand where it's blocking or quarantining it is important as well. And, and it sounds like, I mean, between uh, what you guys are talking about, the, the, one of the, the easiest points of entry for a hacker, for somebody phishing is through email. It's, it's it, because that information gets in there. And then unfortunately, if somebody clicks, what happens then? What, what do we do if somebody has clicked on something and then realize, oh my gosh, this is, Whatever I clicked into is Pandora's box. How, how do you deal with it then? Are we, are we screwed at that point or is there still hope for us? Uh, Sam, if you want, I'll do the personal aspect part of that and then you could do the what you do if you're part of the business. Yeah, yeah, that sounds okay. great. So for personal, I mean, if you believe you've entered your credentials from a suspicious link, um, changed it's important to immediately change your password using a strong password. This is not a variation in any way, shape, or form with any part of your old password. So if your old password was angel button one, which please don't ever do that, it should never be angel button two, you know. So <laughs> if you have to open up a book in your, you know, in random page and look up you know, some part of the words there and pick that for your password, that's fine. That's random. But um, yeah, don't use ancient button one. And then of course, implement multi-factor authentication. If it's not enabled for personal accounts, I have not run across an account where I couldn't enable that for free. So it's worth doing a little bit of research to find out how to do it. Um, if you believe you've downloaded a suspicious attachment from an email, uh, it's always recommended to disconnect your device from the internet and take it to a professional to have it checked for um, malware. You can also change your email password using another device. And if you're using that password for any other account, which we definitely don't recommend, but if you are, change your password on all the accounts as well. And then I, we would implement a password manager. Go ahead and find one. There's LastPass. There's a whole bunch of different choices. You can get them installed on your phone um, and use that and to store all your passwords in the future. 
Yeah, I use LastPass personally, and I love it because it yeah. creates it, the, the passwords that it creates. I'm like, there's like nobody that would figure this out ever. And I can't even remember it. So, I mean, it's just, um, I mean, there's definitely a level of um, security there. And I, I have not been, uh, thankfully, knock on wood, I have not been attacked because of that. I've been very careful about that. But multi, multi-factor multi authentication is, to me, the way to go. And I think even if people have just been loath to use it because it is an extra step, trust me when I say this, as a victim of identity theft, that extra step is well worth it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, there's some uh, password managers in LastPass I haven't played around with like recently, but I wonder um, if it doesn't have it, where it's also monitoring you on the dark web to see if you're coming up in any of the breaches, if your uh, password combination is, and it notifies you as well. Yeah, I've noticed that with um, with some companies that provide credit monitoring, and actually the company that I use, and as and I think LastPass has a, a, a portion of that that does keep track of my information because I have been notified a few times, but um, since my last big identity theft experience, I have not had anything nearly as bad as some of the stuff that I hear from other people. So, uh, but I, I just think there uh, there is nothing wrong with being cautious and making sure that you. Um, you definitely have put some systems in place, and even even if you have to spend a little bit of money, um, the 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 amount of sanity that that provides and just security uh, is well worth it. Absolutely. I- I know that uh, a lot of the password managers also um, have family features. So if you are hesitant to use it on your personal account, because you know that you have a, a grandparent or, or wife um, who may be using a service like Netflix or something like that, there's a, a family feature where you can share those passwords out so that they'll have access to them as well. Yeah. Yeah. I, I actually have, I mean, I think it's, it's um, when I was putting our will together, I actually put, there's this like, like a password key that you can create um, in case something happens to somebody in the family. Cause I know people's fear are, oh, I create this password. Then if something happens to me, my spouse or whomever, they don't, they don't have access to get any of that. So you can pretty much do that nowadays with all of these services, even with Facebook, if something were to happen to you and you want somebody to, you know, cause your, your, your social media profile, all that other stuff exists out there. So um, you want to give people access to it if, if they need to either close those things down or, 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 or close them up in a proper way. And so it's um, certainly want to try to take advantage of that and understand that, that a lot of these safeguards have been put in place to address issues that, you know, you hope would never come up, but if they do, you can deal with them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So okay. um, from a, business perspective about clicking the link, um, it, the big thing is that um, we want to limit what sort of um, activity that person, uh, whoever accessed that account is able to do. So again, changing the password on the account, if you hear from a user that they, they've they clicked the link, um, changing that password, checking the login activity, um, but then also making sure to check across multiple users. Um, likely that if one person received the email, more than one person received it. Um, doing some uh, message tracing uh, in order to see who received that email um, and uh, looking to see if there's any other additional uh, activity from the user that clicked the account. So um, did they set up uh, inbox rules is a big one. Um, Did they, uh, you know, set up any sort of um, uh, account, uh, uh, I'm, I'm not account takeover, but uh, account allocation, allowing people to access other people to access their account. Um, these sorts of things that attackers will use in order to try to remain persistent in the account. Uh, and then, you know, again, enabling multi-factor is always good after something like this has happened. Yeah. Uh, Angel, you want to add some stuff? Uh the message traces are good for rules, as you mentioned, any kind of forwards going to be deleted, any kind of um, forwards going to your RSS feed was another little trick that they do. Uh, they also um, will uh, start replying to emails as they've sent out an email from your account, but they're going to, that's another thing that they'll start doing. Uh, that's another phishing campaign. 
and they'll start replying back to tell people to open it. If they question it, you have to look for that kind of activity. Um, I'm trying to think there was something else that they do that we kind of watch for. If it just slipped my mind, if it comes back to me, I will let you know. And then I guess one of the big things is that if this does happen to you and I work at a firm, I need to report this to somebody. Um, who, who should I report this to? Because I, cause I mean, again, I might be embarrassed that this happened to me, but it happens to a lot of people. So how do we encourage people to step up and say, hey, let somebody know right away? Because not only will it impact you, but it will impact, it could start to impact everybody else on your team. Absolutely. Absolutely. The issue with that uh, the campaign and, they, and the credentials is that they're going to log into your account and they tend to sleep on it for a while and stay within your account and they start collecting information. Uh, then they'll send out an email and start a lateral movement, right? So it'll start from your account and they will send out emails legitimately to other people within the company and outside of the company coming from a legitimate account, which is yourself. And then they're going to enter those credentials. So if, if you're concerned that um, you've entered your credentials and it's suspicious, definitely talk to anyone in your IT department if you don't have a security department and let them know. And um they can research it further for you. Yeah. Now with, with Adafio, if, if you guys are, if you have a client, uh, do, do, do you guys have it set up where a client would just have their people just contact you directly or is there kind of like a, a, a layer before they actually get to you? Uh, that really just depends on uh, how the client interacts with us and what services that we provide. Um, so they, we offer incident response services. So if you have uh, your own uh, internal IT department and you know there is an incident and you're looking at it and you're thinking, I, we really don't know where to go. Um, even if you understand, you know, from a technical aspect, what's going on, um, there's a lot of things about management, communication, um, you know, uh, additional threats, uh, compliance, these sorts of things that you might have to deal with. And we're experts in that. So yeah. we can handle a lot of these uh, management processes and report writing and all this other stuff um, to really get a handle on that incident. Um, and then, of course, you know, so you can contact us directly. Um, and then, you know, we also offer as an, as an MSP, we have, um, you know, help desk support services that we provide. Uh, and in that case, you know, those help desk support services also pass things along to us, um, that we, you know, look at to see if there's any, uh, sort of security, uh, incident that needs to be investigated. Okay. And then you guys are, there's this one, I'm, I'm Go so ahead. Sorry. I'm sorry, Angel. Go There's ahead. just one quote that I had found um, on a Dafio uh, site or a document that I had read recently that kind of hit it. Um, and uh, it hit for me what a Dafio does for small and large businesses. So as a wise person once said, you do not drown in, by falling in the water. You drown by staying there. So our job is to be the lifeguards when our cl clients fall into the water. So I thought that was a really good quote to kind of establish what we as Adafio do for our clients. I love that. And, and, and people are going to fall into the water. I mean, these issues are going to come up. Fishing is going to happen. It's, it's not going to go away as long as people are out there looking to take advantage of other people. And then on top of everything else, there's, there's always going to be, whether it's, it's the coronavirus or COVID-19 right now or something else in the future, there's always going to be something that is going to technically threaten the, the backbone and infrastructure of the technology that you need to run your business. And you're always going to need somebody like Adafio to help you out with in, in that case, um, just so that you can weather the storm. And, and, and also just sometimes it's just good to have somebody to tell you that, Hey, everything's going to be okay. We got you and we'll fix it. <laughs> so, you know, uh, I'm sure that's, that's a, a relief when that comes out of your mouths, uh, will or, uh, or, um, our, our Angel or Tom, I, I'm sure that, uh, that folks um, really, really like that. So, yeah, uh, you know, and that's uh, the the big thing about this. I'm is, sorry, I, I said Tom. I meant Sam. So I oh, apologize about that. So <laughs> you're fine. You're please fine. Please forgive me. <laughs> um, I will pretty much well, answer Tom. to any name. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah. that's, the, yeah, that's the big thing is that, you know, w when we look at something like this, um, we try to figure out what is not only how to find the incident, contain the incident, but then what is best for the business, you know, uh, 
uh, how are we going to help you uh, in order to, uh, you know, still meet whatever objectives you need to meet, still uh, have, have uh, uh, the best for your employees and that sort of stuff. You know, we, we consider these things. It's not just, okay, well, we're, you know, we're just looking at this one small thing. We look at the whole picture. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, um, I appreciate that. We have, we have run um, quite a bit here. There's a lot of really great information that I can't sh- wait to share with our audience. And I know that there's hopefully, I know that there's some, I have a lot of small business owners that are listeners of I Am Northwest Arkansas and others, but um, just to, to finally close out, um, uh, Angel, Will, Sam, do you have any final last words? And uh, Angel, I'll let you go first. Um, since we didn't let you go first before, I'll let you go first now. I apologize about that. <laughs> That's fine. Um, I guess the biggest lesson or the thing I can say is, you know, in our lifetime, we're going to click that link. We're going to download that attachment. And instead of trying to hide that, uh, please share that information as quickly as possible so that uh, people that are experiencing this can go and fix it. It is very hard to figure out if it's a legitimate email or a phishing email these days, they're just, they're really good at it. But, um, you just make sure that you share and you don't try to hide it and understand that 95% on top of this, 95% of uh, breaches come from phishing emails. Right. So we're aware of that. Right. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. <gasps> thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Sam. Uh, yeah. I would just say that, you know, be thinking about this sort of stuff and um, be thinking about the risks and threats uh, that you as a company have, especially when we have um, all of the uh, events that are happening as we talked about. Uh, this is not something that you can just put off as a company, uh, no matter how big your organization is, no matter what your organization does. Um, you need to have uh, people thinking about this. And the uh, big thing too, is that it's everyone's job. <laughs> it's not just an IT person's job. It's not just a, uh, if you have a, uh, a chief of information security, it's not their job. It's everyone from the CEO down to uh, the uh, intern. Uh, everyone's job is security and everyone needs to be thinking about threats at their level. So yeah, I like that. I like that. Okay. And last but not least, Will, you have something to add? Yeah. Um, I, I think Angel and um, Sam covered it pretty well. Um, just remember, you know, no matter what size of business you are, if you're concerned, if you're worried, if you've got a problem, uh, feel free to reach out to us. Even if you're not our customer, we'll, we will do our best to help you however we can. Uh, and try to allay your, allay your fears and get you guys in a good spot to be able to continue your business and and uh, make sure that in these trying times you don't become a statistic. You're able to continue doing business well after April, May, June timeframe. Absolutely, yeah. Because I, you know, and and that's part of the reason why I'm doing these. A is just to get on top of you know people's fear factor, if you will. And and I appreciate you guys coming on on such short notice just to kind of provide some expertise and, and, you know, and really get into the, the weeds of, of what it is that you guys do on a regular basis that so many of us look at and say, oh my God, that's just so beyond my, my understanding that I, I don't know what to do. I'm just going to stick my head in the ground. And so you guys are there to kind of help people through these, these situations and these tough times. And so I, I really appreciate you sharing um, your experience and understanding, and certainly anybody listening to this, if you, um, if, if IT doesn't stand for information technology in your book, then you need to give Adafio a call. You need to understand what it is all about. If you run a small business and you and you've kind of have a patchwork of computers connected together, and you don't know what a VPN is, you need to contact these guys because the, I'm sure they can help you institute even a, a couple of small things that will put you on the straight and narrow path uh, to protecting your organization, uh, protecting your company, and even protecting your clients. So uh, I certainly want to um, encourage you to do that, and I really appreciate you guys just sharing some 
personal items that can help the average individual. And I'm going to kind of parse these out and share uh, anecdotally some of this information because it, I think it would be very helpful for anyone, anybody listening, it, whether you're in Northwest Arkansas or beyond, um, we could all stand to protect ourselves a little better um, from a cybersecurity perspective. So thank you guys all so much, Will, Sam, Angel. I really appreciate it. And, and big shout out to Melissa Swan, uh, the marketing director at Idafio for pulling this all together. And um, that's, that's pretty much all I have. I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you. Thanks for having us on. Thanks, Randy. Yeah, we really no appreciate problem. it. No problem. Well, folks, there you have it. Another okay. episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas. Uh, I'm your host, Randy Wilburn. And, and as I said, I don't know whether you're listening to this sometime and uh, right after it was recorded or if you even listen to this six months from now, uh, we will have gone through a very difficult and serious time. And, and it's, it's good to have friends. It's good to know people and to be able to get good quality information. And that's what we're trying to provide here at I Am Northwest Arkansas. So again, I really appreciate the folks from Adafio coming on on such short notice to share uh, their expertise and understanding of, of things that can honestly be a little bit scary. And um, we'll get through this, folks. We're all, as I as I like to say, I cre created a little moniker the other day, NWA Strong. So that's going to be our new moniker. I mean, every part of the country has to find something to ta attach to. And I, I'm just saying that because of the resiliency of the people of the Ozarks and how we, we figure out a way to come together and unite, uh, we'll be better because of this situation and not weaker because of it. So that's all I have for today. I will see you with a new episode very soon. Take care. We hope you enjoyed this episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas. Check us out each and every week, available anywhere that great podcasts can be found. For show notes or more information on becoming a guest, visit IamNorthwestArkansas.com. We'll see you next week on I Am Northwest Arkansas.